Now that we've achieved feature parity with the original Fortune Crunch app, I want to take a moment to do some refactoring of the script. Because while it's not long, it's only 47 lines, it is still a very procedural and linear script. You need to read every line of the script to figure out what's going on. You create a window, say what the fortune is, create some visual elements, assign a listener, create its handler, and compose the window. I think that all scripts should have a main. And just in hearing myself describe those, it sounds like we do create elements, assign behaviors, and arrange elements. So now I'm just going to wrap those functions around the statements that we already have. So here we create the elements. Here we assign the behaviors. I'll admit there's only one statement in there for the time being, but clearly that could change. And here is where we arrange the elements and make a window out of them. It does occur to me here that window open is not really part of arranging elements. Now also, because I've wrapped create elements, open cookie, and the other elements, um, in that function, their scope is now limited to create elements. So later on when I do in assign behaviors where I do close cookie add event listener, that would fail because close cookie is not in the same scope, is not available to assign behaviors. So what we'll do is just make create elements do assignment or instantiation of the variables and then outside where it's also clear that they're global, we'll define them. So close cookie, open cookie, open cookie image, and paper. And that's it. In the first 10 lines here, on the 11th line, I've outlined all the variables that are involved in the script, window, fortune, close cookie, open cookie, open cookie image, and paper and clearly define the program flow. You see we create elements, assign behaviors, arrange elements, and then open the window. So now whenever I or any other developer needs to make a change, I think it's pretty clear where you would need to go. If you had some idea of what you wanted to change, these descriptive function names will allow you to determine where to go to make those changes. And it's also going to make inclusion in other larger scripts much easier. So as your program grows, as your application grows, um, adding additional features is going to be much easier to manage. Now we're going to add another feature, which is probably one of the more obvious ones, which is the ability to display any one of a number of fortunes, as opposed to always displaying the same string. So let's create an array of fortunes and then display any one of those. So let's give it a list of things to choose from, um, something profound, something mysterious, and of course, something widely applicable. And now, instead of just displaying the value fortune, we're going to make a call to get fortune, and that's going to give us a random function or a random fortune. So define get fortune. And as I said, that's going to return random number. Random number is equal to now to get a number with a random number within a range, we're gonna have to create our own random function math.random returns you call uh, numbers between 0 and 1. So we want something that's going to give us a random number between a, and a range. So the minimum value we want is 0 because JavaScript arrays are 0 based which means that then the maximum would be the length of the array minus 1 and now we need to define 
the random function. Get the minimum, and maximum. I'm going to give it some reasonable defaults by saying min is equal to min or zero, max equal to max or one, because that's what would happen if you made a call to math.random. So in that way, it'll behave like math.random. And then to create a random number in a range, the formula is random equals minimum plus, and then we need to round the sum of math.random, which is a number between 0 and 1, and the difference between your max and min. And that's a random number in a range. So we turn rand. And now looking back, we call get fortune, which will get a random number between 0 and the maximum number we have here, the maximum number of fortunes in the list. Random will give us a random number as we define. So let's go take a look in the iPhone. Actually, let's launch Android first. Now looking at Android, I mean uh, iPhone. Happy mobile hacking. Quit and relaunch. Happy mobile hacking. Doesn't seem random at the moment. Happy Mobile Hacking. Maybe this is just three tails in a row. Four in a row. That certainly doesn't seem random. Are we seeing the same thing on Android? Something profound, so at least it's different. Um, backing out. Something profound. No. Two different strings, but they're the same. But again, you can get two strings in a row. Widely applicable. Okay, so it looks like we're not going to have the same issue on Android as we do on iPhone. Yeah, now we've gotten three different fortunes in four runs of Android, and we got the same fortune four times in a row on iPhone. It appears that we've got a problem with the iPhone random. Let's see if we can fix this issue where iPhone is not returning random or not even alternating our fortunes. Sometimes random number generators need to be seeded. So I'm going to seed it with seconds from the epoch. Do that by new date, get time. Let's see if that changes anything for the iPhone. Something profound is also something different, which is good. Something profound again. It's a little less good. Something profound. Something profound, four in a row. I'm not feeling too good. Five in a row. It appears we've just changed the fact the index of the one I'm returning, but it's always going to be the same. And that is in fact what we're doing. If you look in the forums on developer.appcelerator.com, you can find a couple of references to this issue. Uh, it's a known bug in iPhone. So what we're going to do is work around it. I'm going to create a flag that I'm going to call has bad rand. And at the moment, the only thing that I know that's in this has bad rand group is iPhone. So I'm going to test for some to see if something's iPhone by using the titanium property ti.platform.os name and that's a string so I can then call match on it and give it a regex of iPhone. So does it match iPhone? And then in our random function, if has bad rand, do something else do we have been doing. And what I'm going to do for has bad rand is use seconds divided by max, and then this is the modulus operator, so it'll give me the remainder of that. So in our example, um, it'll divide by 3, which would give me a remainder of 2, or up to 2, 0, 1, or 2. And that's a problem. We want it to give me a remainder of 0, 1, 2, or 3, in the current case where we've only got 4 items. Um, for the regular RAND, the min of 3, the maximum there, is the max of 3 is what we want. So we'll just need to up max 
if it has bad RAM. So if has bad RAM max plus equal one. And that should take care of things. Let's go start Android first just to give it a moment to get going. And launch iPhone. Something profound. That's what it was last time. Widely applicable. That's a new one. Widely applicable. At least it's not stuck on the same thing. Widely applicable. Three in a row. Something profound. So two and three. Something profound. I'm looking too random here. Something profound. We also only have four items, so there's something mysterious. It'd be hard to get a real wide distribution on only four items. But we clearly are not stuck any longer. So that's the issue with it being pseudo random. Let's look at Android and make sure that our changes didn't hurt anything over there. Okay, iPhone or Android would like me to wait. Widely applicable. Something profound. This is looking good. Something profound. It would appear we haven't broken anything widely applicable. So we now have the ability to give random or at least varying strings in both iPhone and Android. In testing and demoing the random fortune feature, it became clear to me that quitting out of the app and coming back in just to get a new fortune is less than ideal. So I want to add a, some UI element that will let me more easily get a new fortune cookie. I think I'm just going to add a button that will hide this current open cookie and then show the closed cookie and so you can just click the button and keep getting new cookies and new fortunes. So we go back to the text editor and let's add one more item to our list of visual elements. So we'll do new cookie button and that will be defined by doing our first new cookie button ti.ui.create button and its text is set by title so I'll say new fortune cookie maybe give it a, some dimensions so width 200 and a height of 50 and I'm going to position it 25 pixels off the bottom and I'm also going to hide it by default all right, so we now created a button. Let's go add it to the window. So we've now added it, but it's still hidden. So on open cookie, when we show the open cookie, let's also show the new cookie button. So now we can see it. Now, once it's visible, Let's give it some behavior. So new cookie button dot add event listener new cookie and define new cookie. It's an event handler, so it gets an event as an object or as an argument. New cookie will hide the open cookie. This would also need to hide the button itself. And it'll show the close cookie. I think that's it. We created a button. We add it to the window. We show it when we open the cookie. When somebody clicks on it, we run new cookie which hides the open cookie, hides the button itself, and shows the closed cookie. I think that's it.
let's go test. Let's, uh, as always, start with Android. And then go look at iPhone. Something mysterious, new fortune cookie. That looks like it works. Indeed. So just that simple, added a button, and I'd like to say partly because of the code restructuring, it's pretty easy to know where you add items. Let's, uh, just before I get too happy, let's go look at Android and make sure that it worked there. Something mysterious, new fortune cookie, something profound. Indeed, we've now easily added a new user interface element, and uh, with what was that, eight lines of code, able to uh, toggle our fortune cookies. Accelerator doesn't just abstract things out to the least common denominator or something that works only on all platforms. It also has platform specific functions. Uh, one of those, the one I'm going to show you now, is the shake gesture that the iPhone has. So I was thinking the easiest way to show that would be if we shake, just go to the next thing. So when we shake this open cookie in this example, give me a new cookie. And then when you shake that, open the cookie. Shake that, give me a new cookie. So it's really simple to do. Um, shake is just an event that we can listen for. So it happens to be ti.gesture dot add event listener uh, shake and we'll do toggle cookie because it's always just gonna do the right thing and the event handler is toggle cookie and event as argument and let's say if what opened cookie visible so if the open cookie is visible, then I want a new cookie. Else, oops, new cookie. Else, open cookie. That really should be it. On shake, from this, is the open cookie visible? If so, that means I want a new one. Same as if I clicked on the new cookie button. Else, I want open cookie, which is same as if I clicked on the close cookie image. Should be it. This time we're only going to run it in iPhone. And you simulate it by clicking hardware shake gesture. That seemed to work. Something mysterious. Shake gesture, new one. Shake gesture. And there you go. A real simple event. And because of the nice discrete functions, it's real easy to just toggle and do the right thing. It always just does what it would do if you clicked on one of those buttons. So that's the end of the tutorial. Um, please let me know if you've got anything else you'd want to see either added to this kind of silly little demo app or any other apps or principles you'd like. I've gotten some comments obviously um, in the comments to the original article and from the App Accelerator guys. Some of the things that have come up are local storage or tweet this button it doesn't have to be continually adding things onto this app. I'm, I really don't know how much further we can take it anyway. I've got a couple ideas, but it's going to run out soon. So let me know of anything else you'd like to see. And uh, thanks for watching.